on ABC Radio Sydney. How do we feel about immigration in this country? A new opinion poll method has been used to try to tease out what we really think. It's not a survey. Instead, scientists analysed internet usage with the help of artificial intelligence. How does that work? Anna Boucher is the Associate Professor in Public Policy and Political Science at Sydney University, and Alyssa Choi is a data scientist with Maven Data. Good morning to you both. Hello. What's this study looking at, Anna? Um, so basically we're interested in two things, what people think about coming to Australia as migrants and what Australians think about migration. And we looked at this by focusing on the key languages spoken in Australia, focusing on census data, so the global English, Chinese, Indian English, Arabic and Spanish and Vietnamese because we thought those would be the types of people who might want to come here. And what we found is that aside from those speaking English in India, where there was a high level of interest in coming to Australia, other language speakers were not that engaged, not as engaged as we might expect. And that Spanish speakers are focusing on the US. And I think maybe the key finding that Chinese speakers had pretty low levels of engagement. That's interesting. How are you setting the benchmark for what constitutes a high level of engagement? Um, I'm going to let Alyssa answer that because that's really a data science question. Jump in, Alyssa. Hi, good morning. It's a good question. So the way in which we assess content online is essentially extracting all of the articles, uh, everything on websites, social media, blogs, etc., on the internet around each of these topics. And it was important to use uh, advanced analytics, specifically machine learning and natural language processing, to uncover how people engage with these content pieces online in their natural environment in an unbiased fashion. So when we're looking at content, we're, in, we're measuring multiple things millions of behavioural interactions and over 400 emotions. And the fundamental uh, piece of this research is that we are able to pre predict trends based on emotions and emotions drive behaviour and strong emotions change behaviour. So we do a, ro a whole raft of analysis uh, around defining what engagement means using cognitive behavioural science, using advanced analytics uh, and a myriad of things that I suppose uh, gives us an assessment on are these issues deeply engaging, do they really matter, and how do people feel about them? So when people hear about summaries of our internet search results, they might think that you're looking at uh, people in India or China typing in, how do I migrate to Australia, or Australians typing in, why are there so many Indians in my neighbourhood? This isn't that. I yes, it goes that, but there's also other things. Yeah. It, Sorry, Lisa. Alyssa, Alyssa yeah, you take it so first and then I'll come to you, Anna. Sure. It goes far deeper than what people search on Google. We, we do include information from Google, but when you search for something online, it's just the uh, very first part of understanding interest, but engagement goes much deeper than just interest. Uh, what we do is obviously people, we can see what people are reading online, which content pieces specifically people are engaging with, and what the emotions around those topics are describing those issues are online. So. It's, uh, it starts with a Google search, most likely, and it always ends up in some myriad of content pieces as people are engaging with this content, searching, reading, sharing, commenting. Uh, those are the clues that gives us an idea of how deeply these issues matter to these people. And when, when, when we're talking about content here, Anna, what sorts of things are we talking about? We're talking about articles about Australia, articles about migration, things that people are sharing on social media. What is it? Yeah, so like linking back to what you just said, a, a sort of early stage of engagement by be, might be looking at how can I come to Australia, looking at the sites of migration agents. What's really interesting is that some government websites are not translated into these um, community languages. So people are using um, actually sites like the ABC translation into Mandarin to find this information. Um, and then as they become more engaged, like Alyssa said, then it becomes about commentary, about opinion, about... Um, why are there so many people in my neighbourhood or there should be more people in my neighbourhood or my neighbourhood is very diverse and that's a good thing or those, those kind of more opinion um, shaping uh, ideas. So there's a kind of scale of engagement that we observe in the data and as we've said, the real place where that engagement is the strongest is for Indian um, Indian English speakers. So you mentioned that Indi Indian English speakers are heavily engaged with Australia, but not uh, Hindi speakers and not so much speakers of Chinese languages and not so much Spanish speakers who seem to be focused more on the United States. What did we find out about Australians' attitudes? Um, that's 
that, I think that's actually the, probably the most positive and interesting aspect of this study. Australians are quite engaged in migration, and they, from what we can tell, this is a this is a timeless trend. Um, and they're mainly looking for information. So they're at that early stage of looking for information about what's happening. And they use government websites a lot. And I think, both of and I think that's quite positive because it demonstrates that the government has the capacity to shape the agenda here and inform the public about migration. They're kind of waiting for the government to act on this topic. Did you see reactionary anti-immigration content? Uh, we have. We're doing a separate piece on that next year. Fascinating. Uh, and Alyssa, how do you tease that out from the background din of the conversation about migration? Well, migration is such a rich topic. It's got so many facets. And when we took this study, uh, working with Anna as an expert in the field, we were looking at it from many angles. You know, as a migration destination, uh, what are the attributes of choice and determining whether to migrate here? There were things like education, investment opportunities, job opportunities and racism. All of those topics feed into how people make decisions around an assessment around Australia. And so not only are we looking at how people are engaging with content online, but more importantly, this research and this methodology is founded on emotion because we measure emotion and we, when you can measure emotion, then you get an idea of how deeply people care about issues and why. <laughs> when, and that's the, interesting, that's the interesting side of this research. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating to think about how, how deeply people care about things like immigration in Australia, but it's even more interesting, I think, what's intriguing about your research is to, to find out how much non-Australians care about Australia. I remember, you know, Bill Bryson, the American humorist, he wrote a book about Australia called Down Under, and in the introduction to it, he did a, uh, like a LexisNexis search of all the times that Australia gets, gets mentioned in American news reports and newspaper articles and magazines and so on, and he compared it to other things and concluded that Americans care about Australia a little bit more than they care about bananas, but a lot less than they care about ice cream. <laughs> Does that comport with your research? I'm sure if we took a look at that, we could also do something very similar. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> this is the beauty about this research. Uh, everybody's got an opinion on these issues, and migration is something that, you know, it's very difficult to ask through a survey poll or focus group. People don't always answer the truth, and that's okay. And so with our ability to uncover what people need to care about and why and measure through, uh, I suppose, relative importance, we can really help shape the way in which we think about these issues from multiple lenses, multiple languages and multiple company, uh, countries outside Australia. Anna, Alyssa, thanks for your research and thanks for letting us know about it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That's Thank a, you. Yeah, that's, a, that's Anna Boucher, who's, the, who's a, an Associate Professor in Public Policy and Political Science at Sydney University, and Alyssa Choi, her colleague who's a data scientist with Maven Data, about these secret insights that they've gleaned into what people abroad think about migrating to Australia, and equally importantly, what Australians think about people migrating here. Not what we say we think, but what we actually do think. It's 13 to 8 o'clock. Uh, thanks for your texts about testing for...